Welcome to GoDaddy School of Hustle, where we draw inspiration and motivation from entrepreneurs who are making their own way. Today, I have a very special guest, uh, somebody who inspires millions of new actors coming around the world. Uh, he's an actor, he's a screenwriter, he's a director, and what Time Magazine calls him, the superstar of Indian art house cinema. But that's not only the only thing. You know, we talk about hustling, and here's somebody who hustles with perfection. He's been the captain of Indian rugby team, an avid sports person, and a very, very passionate social entrepreneur. So Rahul, welcome to GoDaddy School of uh, Hustle, and it's a pleasure having you here. Thank you, Nikhil. The kind of intro you made, you could put a lot of people out of business here. Yeah? You were fantastic. Um, hustle, hmm. That's the word that um, is anathema to me. I, I actually don't know whether I'm a hustler. Uh, thank you. Thanks for having me here. Um, I don't know about millions of actors, maybe one and a half from behind the rest, but that's it, you know. No, you, you be, you've been humble. And so there are the three qualities um, about Rahul, uh, I must be say, because I want to go back to when I first actually end up uh, meeting Rahul in a personal capacity. I was always looking at him at a distance, you know, when I was running all these marathons and here he was, he would come and... The distance was that he was way ahead of me and I was <laughs> way behind. That was the distance. Uh, but, but, you know, humility, hard work and hustling. So we talked about hustling, but, uh, you know, when I met, met Rahul at, a, at the event and, you know, we were, it was an event about some fundraising uh, for different causes and Rahul was speaking there. And, you know, I approached him and I asked him about uh, the foundation, which is your entrepreneurship venture. And you took almost an hour to sit me down and actually walk me through why you started, how you're going about it, what are the small, small details about it. And you know, it really gave me a lesson and gave every entrepreneur a lesson of, you know, like how do you be humble and talk about your passion. So, you know, I'd love to start off with that, that how did the foundation come about? Uh, th there isn't a short answer to this. I'll try and make it as short as possible. I think a lot of people are concerned about the inequity in the world. When I was looking at the vast uh, sort of abyss between the lowest form of development and the highest form of development in this country, I said, fine, if development has to be long term and take root and be successful, it might be slow, but it'll be sure and it'll be long lasting. <coughs> For development to take place like that, the people of that land, of that land, have to buy into it. So to that end, this is the only NGO in the world doing this. We go into an underdeveloped area and we select six children at the age of 11. And then we give them the best. By the best, I mean the wisest, the most compassionate, the most empathetic, the most emotionally intelligent, the most kind, the most, the deepest, richest, real human education that any child could want from the best places in the country. We have six kids from Kashmir um, who are now 19. They were 11 when they were selected. Ashoka University, Shiv Nader University, Symbiosis, Sapphire College. And we have five kids from Manipur who are now in their 10th standard finishing their CBSC from New Era School, Panchgani. If you can actually 17 years yeah. later send these kids back to their homelands as giants, deep, wide, rich, informed, educated, and go back there to change things with the lieutenant governor or the chief minister or not. What amazing, powerful human beings they could be in engineering change there. And that's why you came on board. I know that you drove the whole thing and I met the whole GoDaddy team later on. My belief is there are millions of people like you and millions of people like me. We just need to connect and we need to have a little bit of time and a little bit of um, kindness to stop and listen and share. There's moments from many people when they you know, start doing this activity. It was not necessarily in your case, but tsunami when it happened. You know, there was a story where you actually had gone yeah. down there, spent a lot of time. If you could just share a bit on that. I think not many people have heard about it or it'll be great for our viewers to hear that. The tsunami struck on Boxing Day, 2004, December 26th. And I was watching the television and I kept, I knew that the, the tsunami had hit the Andaman Nicobar Islands, but I, there was hardly any coverage of it. I made about maybe 90, 100 phone calls 
trying to find people who knew people who knew people who knew people in the Andamans. Drew a blank except one person. My aunt was the deputy governor of the Reserve Bank. She knew somebody in banking, who knew somebody in the state bank. And finally, there was somebody holding a placard from <laughs> state bank of something, you know, outside in the airport when I went there. Uh, and I ended up staying and working uh, on relief and rehabilitation. I made 26 trips over 30 months. For two and a half years, I was in the Andamans. And there's not a single photograph of me in the Andamans. Today, when I, when after those two and a half years, I started my foundation and I selected six kids from the Andamans and those kids have been with us for 15 years. In from 2004 to 2019, in 15 years, there has not been a single photograph of me in the Andamans. You know, it's, it's an honor to like hear these things because I had some opportunity to hear this from you in one on one, but I think a lot of folks don't get to, you know, hear because it's, it, you know, it is hard work. It's not easy as you're saying and you know, it needs a lot of fight from within, fight with the system, with different people around. And I think, you know, it's the persistence which pays off. Yeah. Uh, let me let me ask you about a bit on digitization now. And, mm -hmm. you know, uh, obviously in today's world, it is almost, there's no world without digitization. Yeah. Um, you started the foundation. How did you think about perhaps, you know, building the presence of, you know, online for your foundation? Obviously there was yourself who was the best brand to build it out, but to scale it, to get the word out. Uh, how, did, how did the digitization journey for the foundation start it? It's a, it's a terrible answer. I never wanted anyone to know about the foundation. So the short answer is we didn't. Rahul, let's have a website. I'm like, <laughs> I guess we need a website because people have to write into us. Okay. But if you have a website, it has to be superbly designed, is what I said. Okay. What do we say? Let's talk about this. I said, no, let's not. Let's put out how much money we, we raised in our last fundraiser. I said, no, let's not. So in that respect, we are your worst clients. We are just the nightmare of people because we, I'm constantly <coughs> retreating. At the same time, when I want you or I want somebody from um, another foundation abroad or wherever it is or you know, my colleagues in the industry who, are, who act in, you know, in America or wherever, and they want to know more about this, then yes, we really do need to have a presence. We need to have a presence both uh, digitally on the web as well as on social media. So now I'm beginning to understand that there could be a via media between what I want and what the world wants. So whether it's uh, Twitter, whether it's Instagram, whether it's Facebook, whether it's <coughs> Um, the website, I do believe it's not only is it important, it's respectful to the rest of the world to tell them about stuff. So yeah, I, I, I've, I'm a convert, half yeah. convert. <laughs> yeah, thank you for sharing, uh, you know, this inspirational journey about the foundation, you know, how, uh, how you thought about it, uh, you know, the role, now you're switching more towards digitization as an enabler, so we're happy for that. Um, I just want to end with a few fun one-liner questions. I'm going to try. I'm not that. These good are at... never fun. You know that. Yeah. Yeah? For, for, for the for the answerer, it's never fun. Yeah. The questioner has a lot of fun. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, I, I'll try to make it fun, though. I'm I'm not very good at these ones. But uh, social media. What do you love the most about it, and what do you hate the most about it? Um, <coughs> what I love most about it is that you can <coughs> actually put out information to people in corners of the world that you never, th that, that you earlier couldn't. And what I hate most about it, what everybody hates most about it, is the violence. Uh, I mean, I keep saying, if I had known <coughs> that there was, there were so many people in the world who hated me, I would never get out of bed. What's your favorite tech gadget? There's some pretty nifty things happening in the world of physiotherapy now. <laughs> you know, sports physiotherapy. <laughs> There's some pretty nifty things happening. Uh, but I'm going to still say the phone, because it's not a phone anymore. It can launch a satellite. Yeah. yeah. And, and what do you call your call home for you? Because I know you have roots in Kolhapur, you have roots in, 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 in Calcutta, you have roots in Mumbai. Uh, if I remember correctly, you call yourself half Punjabi, half Bengali. Half Bengali, quarter Punjabi, quarter Maharashtra. <laughs> quarter Maharashtra. This is the truth. <laughs> yes. Because mom was half Punjabi, half Maharashtra. Yeah. And so. I, I know you go back to Kolhapur. Like what? Where do you feel like now when you go and you need to feel like I need to go to what I call home, mm. which place would that be? 
I would call Bombay my home, Kasoli my heart, Kolapur my blood, and maybe Kolkata my soul. Yeah. Favorite food? Shami kebabs and paratha. And the last question, you know, which, which obviously you and I talk a lot about fitness, your favorite fitness regime? Everything which is plyometric and which is, which is dynamic, but it would have to be running as fast as you can to catch the wind. That's still my thing. I love it. Yeah, and if you guys have not watched Raul's tennis post on Instagram, please do. They're very funny and I follow them like... <laughs> because I'm so crap at it. Please do not. <laughs> but your, your persistence at the, your training. So. <laughs> Which is, well, Rahul, it's been, it's been a pleasure chatting up with you. Thank you for sharing uh, so, so many inspirational insights about the foundation, who you are. It's been great pleasure having you here. Uh, and I look forward to uh, hosting you more again on GoDaddy. Next Sula time Fasa. I ask you the questions. <laughs> yes, please. I will try. I won't be as good as you, but I will try. You'll be better. Yeah. I know you. So thank you for watching The School of Hustle by GoDaddy. Please watch us on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook for more interesting episodes. Thank you.